This Thursday, March 14th at 2 p.m. at the Rady JCC at 123 Doncaster Street, the Music and Mavens Concert and Lecture Series is putting on a show that will feature the band called The Family Planners. Known for their fun, energetic shows that feature full funk and soul music, The Family Planners are a band that is guaranteed to get people up and move and bop into the sounds of the 60s and 70s. In fact, the name of the show at the Rady Center is, in fact, Groovin' Through the 60s and 70s. And joining me here in the Classic 107 studio to talk about Thursday's show, I am joined by Tanner Lawton Gustal, who is a member and band leader of The Family Planners. Hey, Tanner, nice to have you here. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Mm -hmm. Uh, I first of all want to start by talking a a little bit about the history of the band. How many of you are there and how did you decide to put together a funk and soul band together? So we um, actually started as a a five piece and this was back in 2011. We did our first show early spring, you could say even late winter of uh, 2011. And we've kind of just been uh, a group of guys. There was myself, um, our bass player, Matt Philopoulos, and then three other guys who had kind of just started getting together, playing, rehearsing, and we're kind of looking for like an avenue in terms of genre to go down um, to to play. And and for whatever reason, um, I think it was mainly actually our original drummer, who uh, is, who's Daniel Burtnick is his name, he kind of uh, thought we had this like kind of funk and soul uh, potential, we'll say, mm-hmm. properties to our sound and like our 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 familiar and shared uh, interests, you know, and in, in artists that we like. And so we just started kind of going with that. Um, Stevie Wonder uh, was like a big, you know, uh, common ground for a lot of us. Mm-hmm. Um, Steely Dan as well, uh, Michael Jackson, and lots of other, you know, these classic artists. And then, you know, these guys, like, again, Dan and and Matt Philopoulos kind of started uh, introducing us even more, like, uh, we'll say traditional funk kind of groups like uh, The Meters and Funkadelic Uh and and stuff like that. So um, we started just kind of rolling with it, and it just felt good. We got a lot of, like, great, you know, response from it and people were were into it and uh that's kind of where we went with it amazing and i gotta ask about the name it's a great name the family planners how did you come up with it so that was actually uh, an old buddy of ours who we were kind of jamming with at the time but never made it into the band um for whatever reason he uh gave me this nickname called mannered tanner the family planner <laughs> and <laughs> I, I don't even really know why he he kind of chose that. He was an interesting cat. Um, but, uh, you know, I think the main reason, and eventually he kind of, you know, explained like, oh, well, you're just like, you're, you're a composed guy and, and you have this knack of kind of getting people together and, uh, you know, putting together bands, kind of like planning a family and, and getting musical, you know, families together, so to speak. So... Um, from there, we actually uh, entertained calling ourselves originally Manor Tanner and the Family Planners, but <laughs> it was just a little too much to it, you know, too many, uh, <laughs> too many words, we'll say. So we kind of chopped it down and we thought the Family Planners was just like a nice, strong kind of uh, band name. Um, kind of, you know, if, if, especially since we went in that funk route, you think of like Sly and the Family yeah, Stone, yeah, right? Yeah, That's yeah. which was another common ground, another art- artist that we enjoyed um, covering and listening to. So that was kind of that's kind of how it came about. <laughs> uh, uh, soul and funk is so great to listen to uh, from an audience standpoint, but as a player on stage, what is it that you and the other uh, family planners love about about playing soul and funk? I think it's like a lot of just kind of the feeling. Um, that you know these this genre kind of communicates and provides not only for the audience and the listeners but for us as players um it allows for you know a lot of expression um and a lot of opportunity for you know um improvising and kind of just doing your own thing um but just a lot of 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 fun too like there's just a lot of great like i said great feelings with funk and soul music um, that I feel kind of, you know, can, can reach out to almost anybody, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a big 
country person or mm -hmm. even like a big classical person. Funk and soul is like very approachable and, and lovable. Yeah, totally. Uh, how big is the band and uh, who's going to be joining you on stage on Thursday? So I think when, you know, when you asked me about the origin of the band, I said we started as kind of like a five piece. And we did that for about a year or so. Uh, but then we uh, were kind of encouraged to, you know, um, branch out. And we got a horn player on the uh, recommendation uh, of a friend of the, of the band. And um, that was Casimir Gruel, who is our tenor sax player and will be joining us uh, at the show on the 14th. And so we're going to be a six piece. There's myself, um, uh, lead vocals and guitar, uh, Anthony Peasy, who's our, our guitar player. Mafalopoulos is playing bass. Um, Tim Eskierski is going to be playing drums with us. Tim also plays in a very popular local band called Apollo Sons. Yes. Um, and right. he's, yeah. uh, we're so glad, you know, and, and thankful that he's, he's on the gig with us. He's a great guy. And then Addison Smith on keys. So, uh, yeah, we'll be a six-piece next uh, on Thursday there. Fantastic. Uh, the band is going to be playing tunes by Stevie Wonder, Elton John, Michael Jackson, Burton Cummings. I'm a child of the 80s. This is stuff that is right in my wheelhouse. Can you give us examples of actual tunes uh, that the band is going to be performing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, some of our uh, favorites, like, for instance, from Stevie Wonder, we're going to be doing Sir Duke and I Wish from mm -hmm. Songs in the Key of Life. Right. Um, from Burton Cummings, we're going to be doing uh, My Own Way to Rock, which is just like a great kind of bluesy shuffle tune. And it's fair to say, too, at this point, too, like we are generally a funk and soul group, but we like to sometimes branch out a little bit, you know, into blues, mm -hmm. even into pop and rock like Elton John. We're going to be covering Benny and the Jets for whatever reason. We started we did that one like a long time ago, kind of just for fun or for whatever reason. I think our keys player at the time was like really into it. Yeah. And we As did a keys it. player would be with Elton John. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we did it. And it just went over really, really well. So we've just, you know, kind of kept it, kept it up. But um yeah, so many great hits, um, and mm. it's just like we're so thankful to be able to play this stuff for people and, and for everybody to, you know, embrace and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. How did the gig come about? Did Carla approach you, or did you approach Carla? So um, from what I understand, Carla saw us at our, uh, we performed at Festival de Voyageur, um, not this most recent year, um, so I guess that would be 2023. Mm -hmm. So last year, we did a set there. Um, and I, I think Carla was in the audience and, and saw the show. And uh, sometime after that, she reached out to me and said, hey, you know, really like the, the set you guys did. Would love to kind of see you come and repeat it for us uh -huh. uh, uh, for this music program that she had, Music and Mavens. Yeah. And, um, and we said, yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Let's Absolutely. do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's also going to be originals uh, in the show. Um, I know you write originals. But how does it work? Like, do other band members come uh, with their own tunes? And how do you flesh it out in rehearsal? So it's it's kind of a process. And we've tried, like, different uh, approaches to it. Um, pretty much the what's kind of worked best for us um, is I kind of put together, like, flesh out, like, an, a, a general arrangement kind of idea for the song that uh, I have in mind. And then I bring it forward to the band and kind of just say, hey, what do you guys think about this? And sometimes it's yay, sometimes it's, you know, nay, depending <laughs> on just, you know, what it's like. Um, and then from there, uh, we, you know, we might tweak it a little bit in terms of arrangement and stuff like that. But um, where the, the rest of the guys really come in, like, just big is uh, just in terms of the, the performances and kind of the parts they, they generate. Mm -hmm. um, like say, for instance, on one of our, our kind of our, our main original that we play in the, we've been playing the longest. Uh, it's called Planning on it. Cool too, and and and, and it's uh, it's it's pretty. You know, the the bass part that Phil wrote for it is just like really really good. In, in fact, I like the like I was I like the song when I, I first put it together, but like I really enjoy the song after you know, hearing Phil's bass part and then, you know, Tony's guitar parts are great. So they, I come with like, you know, I'll, I'll often come with just like the framework and then they help me like really realize it and, and make it the the cool special, you know, piece that it, uh, it becomes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also going to be some uh, improvisation uh, on the show. And I'm just thinking uh, Stevie Wonder and Michael Jackson in particular, for some reason, they popped to my mind. And there's so many places in, in their tunes where, 
they've got these great grooves that can be uh, improvised uh, over top of. Mm. Uh, what's that going to look like on Thursday for, for improvising in, in, in songs? So we like to throw in, um, you know, these these sections, solo sections, you could call them, where we mm. uh, where we do get to kind of you know play, blow, and 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 you know kind of get into more of the like performance art side of uh, of the show. And again, these these types of tunes uh, and, and these genres that we kind of go through are often, you know, um, they really uh, allow that kind of thing to happen. Like there's really great. Uh, foundation musical foundation to yeah, sort yeah. of build off of and, and play off of and you know we might uh we might do solo trading where you know a guy kind of plays a little bit and then another guy trades off and plays and then you know we kind of cycle back and forth um there might be times where we just really let one guy kind of just take it and go and then sometimes we just will kind of go like really far out with it and and just kind of jam and almost kind of become like kind of make a, a different song as we go or just like a different feel to the song, you mm -hmm. know, like kind of expand upon it and and uh, really have some fun with it. And then, yeah, and bring it back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, I mean, you know, we've even had like people come up and uh, either like play on stage with us sometimes. Right. You know, um, sit in and that sort of thing. We've had. Uh, Lots of very enthusiastic dancers and people coming up. <laughs> Sometimes even like guys will come up and like sing a little bit with like gang vocal stuff. So uh, we we often like encourage and are are always like happy to see the audience really getting into the the show and the music. And um, you know if they if they want to come up and have some fun too, we're 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 open to it. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, it's my understanding that advance tickets for this show are actually sold out, but there are limited tickets at the door. How does it feel to know that the show is so popular? And I got to ask the question, do you think Funk and Soul will ever be unpopular? Um, those are two good questions. One, it feels like wonderful that uh, the show sold out so quickly. We we had no idea it would, it would go that fast. Um, uh, it's uh We've never played the Rady JCC either, so we're looking forward to like seeing what kind of new people we meet and what kind of audience that'll bring. Um, so, like I said, it's wonderful. Really happy about it. Um, and then the second question: What was the second question again? Like, do you think do you think funk and soul music will is oh, it ever right, going right. to be unpopular? Yeah, you know what? I I don't know. I would say it it's always going to have its place because um, again, like I said, it's just like the it has just such a great feeling to it. Um, really approachable for just about anybody from all walks of life. Um, whether it will stay, like I, I'd say within the last decade, it's definitely had, you know, kind of a resurgence, uh, especially with groups like Wolfpack. I'm thinking Bruno Mars, actually. Bruno Mars, Anderson yeah. Pack, like that yeah. Silk Sonic album they put out a couple years back was just wonderful, super, super, super good. Um, and yeah, will it stay at that kind of popularity? Um, maybe not it might dwindle a little bit but I think there will always be yeah. like uh, a place for it in the scene in the industry totally totally Dan the show on Thursday grooving through the 60s and 70s sounds like it is going to be just excellent all the best on Thursday and uh, thanks so much for taking the time to stop by and talk to me today thank you so much thank you so much for having me